All right, we got a broken belt here. How you feeling? I'm just breathing. That was, that was a hard hit, but we're still moving forward. Those are just the highs and lows that you get out here at sea. This is Joel. Together with Tony and Jared, he gave up everything to buy a boat and go on the adventure of a lifetime. But after a death-defying sail to Cuba, he returned to Key West and found himself Wish alone. Good luck on this adventure. When Michael finished school, I asked her to sail with me to the Bahamas. Four months later, we made it to the Dominican Republic. Broke and in love. Bums on a Boat is a true story about facing fear, finding adventure, and falling in love. Each tale is brought to you by our patrons and viewers. Subscribe and click the bell to get notified about weekly premieres and visit our website to learn more. Thank you for watching. These are the tales of Boab. Uh. I think it's time to go for it. Ooh, the butterflies. You got butterflies? Of course, I'm so excited, but I'm also nervous. That's how it goes. All right, well, here goes nothing. Good girl, Lola, that's a good spot for you. So you can see there were a few sticky notes that didn't get taken down, but all the ones we did take down, right there. So that's again, that's how cruising goes. You might not get everything you want done before it's time to go. out here like we expected but the wind is right in our face I think we're averaging about four knots which is pretty good that's about what we planned for um, yeah just kind of weird getting back into the rhythm of sailing again it's it's a tough adjustment we're not smooth at all we kind of forget the routine of things um, but overall I'm feeling good how are you feeling babe yeah, better than expected. So Michael um, woke me from my, uh, my little nap. We're doing shifts already. This cargo ship that was anchored all of a sudden was on the move. And uh, it was a little bit tricky because it just turned around a 360, but um, luckily it looks like they're just heading in. And so we uh, changed our course to pass them starboard to starboard. So we basically just started going dead north. And it no, looks- No, we didn't even, we were just going east. Oh, we were going southeast before? Yeah, we were going 130 and now we and then we went to 90 and now I'm back on course. All right, so Michael did great. She woke me up and it was a little tricky. I tried to call him on the radio, but I didn't hear anything back. Uh, yeah, so. I've never been this close fall, to one Yeah, of fall things. off a little more, babe. Whoa. Fall off a little more. Okay. So what you're looking at is Puerto Plata right there. All right, we've been sailing now for a little over six hours. I hope you can hear me over the sound of our engine. She is running like a champ. And 
I just realized that this sunset is incredible. You've got to see this. contradiction when she said we've been sailing. I hope you can hear me over the engine. But not really, because we're motor sailing. Yeah, we are motor sailing, but we are making good time and there is wind in that main sail. It's looking good. We're about ready to tack, so I'm going to have to put the camera down. Alright, we got a broken belt here. Um, Michael called me up, she heard the alarm going, um, found out the key had wiggled into the off position so the battery alarm was going off. I checked the engine, um, I noticed there was oil in the bilge, looks like our overflow tank had some water in it, and then I saw the belt was broken so we cut the engine, we pulled the sails, now I'm gonna see what we can do. So we actually think we found the oil leak, we got the new belt on. Michael uh, went to the bathroom, I switched her out real quick and then on her way up she took a look and found that where our raw water pump was, that where we had that repair down here, in the back when you touched it with a towel um, there was a little oil so I uh, took a wrench to the four bolts on the raw water pump and I got uh, I got a good turn on all of them. And the bottom right one, which is the repaired um, bolt that Thomas helped us with, that one I got I got a good amount of turns on it. So that's actually a good sign. We're, we're hoping that's where the oil went out. We lost about a quart of oil and I've already filled it up and um, the belt is on. So I think right now we're gonna try to start it back up. What's really good is we have both our full sails out. Ah, can you see? It's a beautiful night, full sails, and we're doing like two and a half to three knots. We're getting a nice little southeasterly land breeze. It's not bad, huh? Not bad. Ah. <sighs> Well, you might notice it's a little bit peaceful. The engine is off. We're kind of in the doldrums, but we got a little bit of wind and we're able to keep our heading. We turned the engine off to address this oil leak. We've been battling it for a long time. We think now that it is the new fuel pump that we installed the day before we left, as well as the valve cover, which had an old gasket and we have a new one ready to go so we're letting the engine cool down we got to a point where we can kind of maintain our heading even though we're doing about one or two knots <laughs> uh, one to two knots at best but that's we just got to address this oil leak so yep michael's getting some rest uh we don't got much come on baby We're just coming up on Samana and the cliffs are beautiful. Just um, one thing that I think really got Michael pretty upset is our food went bad. All the food she prepared early, I th we think because the refrigerator got cold and then we had to turn it off for a bit when we lost our engine. We wanted to save the batteries. Uh, it might, it must have got hot and then it got cold again. That's the only thing we can think of. So the broccoli salad, the carrots, a lot of the food went bad and chicken. all the prepared food, the chicken. So that was, that was a hard hit but we're still moving forward. We had some canned chicken and we're gonna keep it going. Good morning. Today is Thursday. This is 
our second sunrise at sea. Um, we're in the middle of the Mona Passage right now. Well, not quite the middle. We entered the Mona Passage about four hours ago, for sure. And we have 60 miles to go to our destination. This has been a tough one, guys. Um, I think just morale-wise, more so than anything else, Joel and I are both struggling to get as much rest as we need. Even when we lay down, we don't always fall asleep. Um, some things we can probably do better in the future is the watch schedule. Not turning off the fridge, I think would help morale a lot. We had so much good food ready to go. Um, yeah, I definitely had a hard time this last night. Kind of lost my cool a couple times. We got rained on, that made things difficult. But the weather overall has been beautiful. And this sunrise this morning is putting a smile on my face. So those are just the highs and lows that you get out here at sea, I guess. Kind of forgot what it was like, to be honest. Thank you so much for these coats, Mom. They have made all the difference in the world. Thomas and Linda, who are like otherwise very healthy people, they're pretty conscious about what they put in their bodies, but they admitted to us that when they're on passages, they crave the junk food, like Doritos or salty high calorie snacks, like peanuts, and they have a nice cold Coca-Cola, because nothing quite refreshes you, like high fructose corn syrup. And I guess sailing is a little bit like backpacking in that sense that when you're out here and you're just like kind of in a raw survival mode, like you just want the highest calorie content junk that you can put in your body possible. So I followed their advice and I got some Doritos and I probably ate this whole bag by myself over the past like not even 12 hours. And it's like one of the only things that I've put in my body that's really settled my stomach. That and black coffee. The coffee's working for me too. So maybe if you're a healthy person and you couldn't imagine needing a whole bag of Doritos and that's gonna be it for your passage food. I don't know, you might consider it. It's working for me. Thanks, Thomas and Linda. Now that the sun is fully up and the wind's picking up again, we're gonna raise the main, try to do a little bit better speed on our course. Ready! Coming into it! Chops it up from the south. 
so there's a short period between these waves. It's really bumpy out here. But with our main and our engine, we're still making good progress, averaging over five knots. And if all goes well, that should get us arriving just before sundown. So, fingers crossed. can't even describe this incredible feeling right now after two and a half years in Luperon 260 miles underway over the last two and a half days we are approaching Puerto Rico Did you see that Puerto Rico let's go baby 6.8 nautical miles until our destination how do you feel right now? Well, honestly, I'm, my head is still in the game. We still have 6.7 miles to go. You're not celebrating anything yet? No, not time to celebrate. Plus, I thought we talked about even if the engine craps out and the boat sinks right now. It was still a good sail, but we're not celebrating. That's not anything to celebrate about. Oh, okay. No, my head's in the game. It, all in all, we've had an awesome experience up until this point. What is that in your hand? A sandwich. Turkey and cheese with sprouts. Oh. Michael just whipped it up for me. Oh. Also, there's the sun setting right over there. Ooh. It's shaping up to be a good one. Sunrises and sunsets at sea, there's just nothing quite like them. So we anchored here for the night, got some rest, and we're not done yet. Now it's time to go into a marina. We have not docked Shock Mate in a couple of years. So this could be harder than sailing 250 miles. We'll see. Two and a half years <laughs> in Luperon. We Dominican made it Republic. out alive. We did make it out, and we have to thank all of you, the supporters, on YouTube, the commenters that stuck by our side every brutal step of the way. We definitely have the best supporters in the world. No sailing, no adventuring for two and a half years. Our patrons, like some of you have stuck with us, you were with us since before we got to Luperon and you're still with us. There's a lot of you that joined us while we were in Luperon and you're still with us today. So we are so appreciative to you for that. 
and you were there with us for every step of our journey here to Puerto Rico. Yeah, thank you. All the support, all the comments. You guys were checking in. You were tracking us every step of the way. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that means a lot to us. And it, it helped us to feel a little more comfortable out there, especially in the Mona, knowing there was a lot of people tracking and they knew where we were. Totally. Case. Yeah. So, and if you're new or you were unaware, our patrons have a GPS tracking link. So that's going to be a lot more fun to use as we move forward because we are on the cusp of doing a lot more sailing. Since we're finally on the move. We're on the move. So we're going to be bouncing around and our patrons are going to know where we're at every step of the way. Yep. All tiers. And thank you. We did it together, all of us. We made it out of the boatyard. Shock Mate sails. Like a beast. Like a beast. She sails like a beast. Even though we motor sailed all the way, I know. But we actually had to pull sails a couple times. Oh yeah. And she did great. 